Hey everybody, WCNC Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. Well, we're about 12 hours away from the third snow in three weeks impacting the region. And every one of these storms has been completely different. And this one is really fascinating because the main storm is actually going to miss us completely. It's going to develop on the coast, but we're going to get a little piece of energy that's going to be injected into that storm that's going to cause our snowfall. So let's look at the map because there is a lot going on. You, you probably have never seen this many fronts and lows at the same time. It is a really complex situation. So the primary storm is going to develop here down off the southeast coast and move towards the Outer Banks later today. This is part of the cold air and the upper level energy, especially this little low and the Arctic front. That's going to be sliding through and kind of merging with the main storm and kind of give it some juice and become this massive nor'easter. So the main nor'easter probably have very little impact on us other than the cold and snow. What's going to impact us is what's happening to our west. You can see the snowfall reports. I'm putting the MPing reports. So these are where snow is actually falling. So you see the enhancement here. There's a lot of upper level energy. This is being driven by the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere more so than the low levels. And so this is going to be the fascinating part as this passes over the Charlotte region later tonight we're going to see a rain to snow mix. So let's get into the details. First off, got to talk about the new advisories. Obviously, we kind of expect this. We've got winter weather advisories in effect for a big chunk of the area, some winter storm warnings. And again, even outside the advisory area, you're likely going to see snow all in this area. It's just a matter of the amounts. These advisories are based on confidence, timing, and the amounts, not so much always the impact. So I do expect widespread light snow, but where the advisories are in effect, that's where we expect at least an inch or more of snow. So we're in that trace to two inch amount. Other areas might get less than two inches or less than an inch. That's why you're starting to see some of the totals come in a little bit lower. The big takeaway from all this is pretty significant travel impacts. That's what you need to glean from this system for us. Because the temperatures will be falling, we'll be going from rain to snow, we're going to see slick roads develop. So low to medium impacts. You see some of the, the orange showing up around Gastonia, Charlotte, out towards Fayetteville. That's mainly because those are urban centers where there's a lot of traffic and we're expecting some pretty significant traffic issues in those areas. So let's talk about the future cast here. So I'm going to stop this right around three o'clock this afternoon. Let me back it up just a second here. Um, notice the temperature is above freezing today. So it's above freezing initially, but the Arctic front comes in after lunchtime. So for the mountains, you're probably looking at a 1 to 4 p.m. start time. Also notice that we've got some rain breaking out across areas of the Piedmont. And this will start as rain. That's the key part about this. As, the, as this little low moves through, you see temperatures falling behind here. This will be light snow. The big question mark is going to be right here when do we see the changeover from rain to snow? And the, the, what drives this, two things. One, the Arctic front, which is coming in from the northwest. That's the really cold air. But also the rate of precipitation. What do I mean by that? How heavy the rain is or snowfall can drag cold air from the upper levels and mid-levels of the atmosphere down to the surface. So the faster it rains or the harder it rains, it changes over quickly. So this could be a situation where you're like, you're outside, you see it's raining, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, every once in a while, a big flat, fat snowflake comes out and all of a sudden it goes to just a complete snowfall in a short period of time. And it really comes down heavy, but it doesn't last long. That's the thing. This burst of snow moves through fairly quickly. The lingering snow develops and lasts after midnight, but the temperatures falling are the concern here. You see how quickly the temperatures fall. Let's look at the rapid refresh version of this. Um, I'm going to stop it. We'll go back a little bit here. We're going to rerun this every hour so you get a better idea, but you can kind of see kind of the same thing. Here comes that burst of rain. And you see where this is yellow here? That That's probably wet snowflakes. One thing about wet snowflakes, because they're a snowflake and have moisture on them, they reflect the radar beam better. We call this bright banding. You'll see this actually develop on the radar where you get really heavy snowfall. And again, this will be a really heavy burst with temperatures around 35 degrees. So look at the time up in the corner. It's 1030. Roads are probably wet, but it's snowing really heavily. As soon as that temperature drops to freezing, that's when the roads deteriorate really quickly. And that happens around midnight. So right around midnight, the temperatures get close to freezing. They fall below freezing and into the 20s overnight and everything refreezes. So by tomorrow morning, we've got a giant, you know, skating rink on the area roads. Also notice how there's more snow a little bit east of I-77. You see how the snow is heavier? So these areas up in here probably will get a little bit of more snow. And so when you look at my snowfall map, this is my latest map, and this is kind of my final call. 
I do think there will be areas east of uh, I-77. So these areas here probably end up with much more snow because they just have a longer duration. There could be some areas back in here that might get nothing or a trace. So it's going to be a pretty tight gradient from a trace to maybe a few spots of three inches over in here. So just be wary of that. That's what I expect to happen. Now, this snow over here, northeast of Raleigh, up towards the Norfolk area, that's the nor'easter. That's the nor'easter effect. And in the mountains, it's twofold. It's the whole system coming through, but then on the back side of the nor'easter, we should have pretty good northwest flow, which will fluff up these totals as well. So all the snow on this map is being generated by a different mechanism. So it's not all from the exact same mechanism, but I guess you could say it's all from the same storm. So let's zoom in closely um, real quickly. I'll move my head out of the way here. So you can see the areas that I expect more in that one to two range, probably going to be just east of the Charlotte area, right in here. And then probably around Charlotte, I mean, Lake Wiley could get a trace, Concord could get two inches. That's kind of the kind of the the, the, the gradient, if you will, across the area. So that's what I kind of expect to happen as we go into the evening hours. And as far as timing is concerned, the timing has really not changed at all, which is pretty amazing. Um, you're looking at 10 p.m. changeover to rain to snow. Now, the rain will start before this, by the way, but the snow changeover happens right around 10 o'clock tonight. And then after midnight, uh, we see a burst of snow and it tapers off around 4 or 5 in the morning. But you see the slick spots. This is the key part. The roads get worse, probably that midnight time frame so if you have evening plans hornets games going on i know there's a lot going on you're probably going to be okay until about midnight after midnight that's when the roads get really bad and we start to see some significant issues on the area roadways because everything kind of ices up in the morning so as far as the snow meter we're at a solid solid four here because it's a legit snow chance is it going to shut the city down no do you need bread and milk no because after probably noon on saturday it's fine if you can go 12 hours Basically, when most of us are sleeping, you're going to be fine. You're not going to need NASA supplies. So it's a real easy storm to prepare for because you just basically after midnight tonight until about noon on Saturday, don't go anywhere or try to not drive and you're going to be absolutely fine. Now, I'll show you a couple more things here that are fascinating about this because uh, the shrek plumes, which you guys know I show you quite a bit, um, just to give updates on last minute. All are coming in right around a half an inch to an inch for Charlotte. The spread is kind of an inch and a half to, you know, there are a couple near zero, but trace amounts. There's one crazy outlier around four inches or three and a half inches. Um, if you throw that out, you get a pretty good idea. The other thing is this is going to be a huge storm for the Northeast. I knew I would get some questions about, you know, how much snow to the Northeast. Well, I'm glad I'm not forecasting up there. Somebody is going to get absolutely clobbered up here in Eastern Massachusetts. So if you're looking for a ground zero, blizzard <laughs> zero, it's going to be right in here. Um, Rhode Island, eastern part of Long Island, going into eastern Massachusetts and Cape Cod, um, absolutely obliterated. So just around Boston Southeast is where we're going to see uh, the biggest part of the system. So there it is, um, cranking up. It'll be interesting to see the low here. In fact, let me show you real quickly how this is going to look. Because this is such a cool system, we got to look at the overall evolution of this because it is very fascinating. So here's the wider view of this thing developing. You see the, the coastal low, but look at the little piece of energy coming in on the back side wraps around and what's fascinating is this little meso low or whatever this is looks kind of like a trough or meso low forms on the back side of the main storm and look at that band of snow uh, to the northwest watch this unfold though you see the main low but look at that little meso low it actually becomes pretty interesting as well as it gets wrapped into the main nor'easter but look at that band of snow i mean it's just offshore of some of these bigger cities but it looks like it's going to clobber boston and then move up the coast and just hammer eastern parts of, of Canada. So let's loop this a couple times because it is, like I said, from a meteorological standpoint, that is going to be a fascinating evolution of a nor'easter and a big, big blizzard for the east coast. Of course, I will post any updates later today. I'm heading to the mountains right now. I'll be covering some of the snow from up there as we get ready for Winterfest up there. And we'll have you covered on WCNC. Brittany, uh, Chris, KJ, Larry, all have you covered as well. Um, just be safe tonight. It'll be quick hitter and be ready for the cold and snow tomorrow because trust me, it is going to be one of the coldest Saturdays you're going to ever remember.